Hi, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. This time I'm sharing my process for my project life for late October. This is a project that took a lot of different uh, turns and twists along the way. And so the beginning part of this video is quite a bit faster than my normal videos. And so uh, bear with me. I just didn't want this video to be too, too long. If you want a more thorough video that shows all of this in a much more slowed down process, uh, that is over on my Patreon page for all of my Patreons. So uh, I just wanted to have a faster version of this. So I am starting by placing out my photos as I usually do, which I, I just do this on my paper templates. So I have two pieces of craft cardstock that I used a ruler and marker just to draw out the design template for design a Becky Higgins page protectors because that's what I usually use on my project life. My first step is always to spread out the photos around the page, thinking about the stories I want to tell and which ones came first and so on and so forth. And uh, I find that when I don't do that, which is what happened in my last project life process, it the process really doesn't go very well. So I've returned to just doing this as my default way of doing project life. I have the Kelly Perky kits from August and September, the Project Life kits, and I also have the hip kits from August and September as well, the Project Life kits. And uh, I'm running out of cards at this point. And that's why this one takes so many twists and turns. So after I spread my photos around on my templates, then I try to put a card in each pocket where each pocket will go. And so this is tricky for me this time around because I have really kind of already used most of my favorite cards. And so I the pickings are pretty slim here. Um, and I feel like I don't have a good stash of Project Life cards because I haven't really been paying attention to Project Life. I took a year off of doing Project Life and so, or any kind of pocket scrapbooking. And so my stash is not what it would be if I had been doing it all along. And so that's why I'm running into some trouble here. I have already project life the past three weeks in a row. And so this is my fourth spread this time around. So I am looking into my stash. I do have a fairly large Becky Higgins stash and uh, I'm just finding that they're not fresh enough for what I'm looking for for this page. A lot of them are pinks and light blues and they're not very fall like and I'm looking for a more fall color scheme. I am using some pinks, but I'm using some of those kind of corally orangey pinks and reds as well. And my Project Life stash just, like my core kit stash, just doesn't have that in it. So I pulled out some other hip kit cards from the summer that I have because I have received a number of Project Life kits from the hip kit club. But they're all the wrong color scheme, like they're all too bright and summery. So I put those away pretty quickly. And now I'm just taking a look at some random cards that I have in my Project Life stash. I have these Ellie Studio cards that have tabs on them. And then I have these weather cards. I think they're from Studio Calico. They're just blank with a weather strip at the top. They're really, really old. And so I pulled those out as well. Um, and then I had that piece of pattern paper already cut at, uh, at four by six. So I added that. Sorry for the little flicker in the camera there. I, um, this is a different time, so this is a completely different day, and I forgot to change the settings on my camera, so this this footage is not as good as the other, but bear with me. It'll come back to the better footage in uh, shortly. So I, uh, I also pulled out some Studio Calico pattern paper packs, like they're, um, they're for, they're six by six paper pads. They used to come in the card kits. I don't know if that's still how they do it, but they were basically six by six versions of the, of the paper that came in the, in the scrapbooking kits back in the day. And, uh, I still have them because I, I subscribed to the card kit, but I actually didn't make many cards. And so I still have all of those paper pads. So I decided to use them since I was a little bit, uh, pressed for having good cards that I wanted with the square corners. So I'm just cutting down a couple of pattern papers that I think will go with the colors that I already had laid out. And this one is quite a mishmash of color schemes. I wanted to include some green because there's greens in some of my photos and I wanted to include those oranges. So I'm doing a couple of switches here just to increase the orange on the page. And uh, just kind of thinking about the, the layout, here's some, I added just a swatch of paper here that has some green on it 
to bring some green onto that card. And then I have these cut aparts from a Kelly Perky kit that bring more orange in. And so I don't know exactly where I'll put them, but I just cut them up and spread them around so that I can remember to use them. Then I pulled out the Freckled Fawn October kit. It's an embellishment kit. And uh, there are lots of orange and greens in that, so I pulled that out as well, and I will draw from that. And now that I have a pretty good sense of what I'm going to be doing, I move my templates over to the side, and I tend to scrap the right page first because it's right beside me, and so that's what you'll see me doing here. So I'm starting by taking this card that has letters all over it, like a, I think it has the ABCs all over it, and I just covered it with two 4 by 6 cards because I, I knew I wouldn't use that, that card. It looks like a blackboard or something, but I knew I wouldn't use it. So this is a set of Ellie Studio date stamps that I adore. I saw these first on Jen Scow's blog or a video or something, and I absolutely adore this date stamp. And it's, it's older now. I bought it right away as soon as I saw it. It was maybe a year ago, and uh, I love it, but I really haven't used it very much. So now that I'm doing Project Life, I'm hoping to use it more. And my thought here is that I will repeat this stamp in a few different places on the page. So this card, this four by six, it's actually a three by four card that I'm working on here, but there's two of them stuck together. Um, it has this little banner with a space on it so I decided to stamp even though the stamp is a little bit bigger than the space I thought that would look kind of nice and casual and I try to not overthink my project life and keep it pretty casual whenever possible so you see I have a little piece of loose leaf with some writing on it that's just journaling that I did ahead of time and now I'm pulling out some stamps here. These are mostly Kelly Perky and Studio Calico stamps from several years ago. I just have them on these cards and I have a, a video on my channel that tells that tells you how to make those cards. They're basically just eight and a half by 11 cards that hold my stamps. It makes it easier for me to see a whole bunch of stamps at once and know what I have in my collection instead of having to flip through individual sets of stamps. So you saw me take one of those stamps, stamp it onto vellum, and now I'm stapling it onto this photo. This photo has a lot of negative space in it, so I thought it was a great place to do some stamping, although it looks a little busy and I, I may change my mind on it. So I just did some journaling about the pickup and how uh, this was her girl guide camp and how she will have memories of spending the night with her girls and getting into lots of shenanigans. <laughs> and I'm using these Kelly Perky letter stickers to do my title, it just says girl guide camp. And then I'm going to handwrite the word pick up using my Sharpie pen and just a little bit of doodling before and after. And then I'm going to fill in the negative space on this card with a couple of strips of washi. And this is the plaid washi that came in the Freckled Fawn kit from October. So now I'm just going to mat this photo on the orange patterned part of one of the cards. And then I just cut off the white part because I didn't need to use it. And now I'm going to layer it along with this Ellie Studio card that was supposed to be like a tabbed 4x6 card, but I just cut it down so it would fit on the 4x6 card with those kind of like sketchy chevrons on it. I think that's an Amy Tangerine pattern paper. It might be one that was exclusive to the Studio Calico kits back in the day when I used to subscribe. And so I'm going to layer these all together and I'm going to outline all three elements, which means the, the background paper, the blue tab piece, and also the orange piece as well. And that just pulls it all together and gives it a little bit of definition. My journaling here says this little roadside diner on the way to Sherbrooke Lake Camp has become part of our family tradition. We usually stop here for fish and chips, clubhouse, or hot turkey sandwiches, or ice cream. Our girl guides are usually dirty, full of bug bites, with matted hair and sunburned skin, and hungry for vittles. And that's the name of the, of the, um, of the restaurant. And I have that, that restaurant shows up in lots of different project lives because we do go to it every year. So this year I took a picture of my car parked outside of it and the sign instead of the restaurant itself because I have other pictures of the restaurant over the years. And this one just says Banksford Carpool Karaoke because we were singing in the car on the ride there. It's about an hour away. So and now I'm just spelling out the name of this song and I'm going to put it on a piece of vellum so that I can journal on it and not have 
and have the journaling just be a little bit more legible over that pattern paper. So the title of the song is 1-800-273-8255. And then my journaling is just, it has a little bit of the song, so a little quote from the song. And then it, and then it says, how wonderful that the title of this song about suicide is a suicide hotline. I just put a little snippet of the song in there as well. And I'm journaling on the on the vellum which you saw me just cut so that it fits over the over the pattern paper. And then I'm actually going to tear it off right under where the journaling ends. And then I'm going to have space for an embellishment, but not the one that I had originally thought. So I was originally going to put that clip on there, but now the space is too small and that would look too crowded. So I'm taking a couple of pieces of chipboard from the freckled fawn kit and I'm going to put those there as well, or I mean instead. <laughs> and I want that arrow that says take note to point to the other card because it just indicates that these two cards go together. I like whenever I have two cards that tell uh, the same story, I like them to point to one another so that it's clear that that's that they go together. Now this is a new Kelly per it's well it's new to me. I don't think it's new to her shop or anything, but this is a Kelly Perky stamp set. I got the morning the early bird stamp set and also the late night stamp set because I thought it would be really relevant for Project Life. And um, I also have this new Brilliance ink that I want to use. I love it for stamping on dark photos, but I just wanted to play around with it. So you'll see me use it in a couple of different ways. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. So on that tile, it was just too similar. I wanted to go with the tone on tone look, but you see how much nicer it looks on a dark background. So that's where I'm usually gonna use it, but I'm gonna play around with it in a few different ways on this spread. So you'll see that as well. Uh, it looks much better on a dark background than it does on a similar background. So here's that stamp set again. I do plan to repeat the stamp set in a few different places throughout this layout. And this is the drop off. So it's, the, it's similar pictures. It's of the Girl Guide camp, but this is the day that we drop them off. So now this is a similar card to the one, the very first one that I did in that it's well, it's, it's a four by six instead of a three by four. And it uh, has that little pink banner with a spot for the date. So I am going to uh, put the date on that space using the same ink. And I'm also going to repeat the same washi tape that I used on that card as well. So these cards will be um, kind of the, like they'll coordinate with each other. They're spread across the page, the diagonally from one another though. You'll see it at the end. So this is an old foodie stamp set that is from Kelly Perky that I love so much. I think it's called Bon Appetit. And I adore this little pink, well, this little, uh, pig that you can stamp and I've been wanting to use it and I never did get a chance to use it. So I got to use it here and I just layered the yes, please on top of it mostly because I knew I wanted to do a lot of journaling. Um, yeah, so I just layered them on top of each other to take up less space. So I'm spelling out vegetarian in green. There are green letter stickers like this and gray ones, but I thought green kind of a, was appropriate for the word vegetarian. And so I spelled out eating out with a vegetarian and then I'm gonna put some colons, but I haven't done it yet. And then I have a quote. I'll have Caesar salad without the bacon. And then another quote that says, and I'll have the same, but with bacon. Actually, I'll have her bacon too. So I, that is the best part of eating out with a vegetarian is you get to eat their bacon. <laughs> Uh, so anyhow, here is the Vimlay coach that w showed up on a previous page when we just ordered it. So here it is being assembled and assembled. And it says every piece of fabric had to be ironed before we could assemble our Vimlay sofa. I just paired it with a card there that says, let's not try to figure everything out at once. It took a whole night to do that coach. It was for two people. It was quite labor intensive. So here's the, the right side of my page all laid out and finished. I did take off that stamp on the vellum that says epic on the card on the photo of my daughter in the camp because it just was, seemed like it was a little bit too busy. So here I have a photo of espresso like um, a latte that my husband had made and the Kelly Perky stamp set about co that's coffee themed. I just got that this week as well and so I stamped the cute adorable little espresso machine and I cut it out. I thought about coloring it gray but I decided not to and I'm going to layer it with a photo like that. I like how just it I think it stands out a lot when it's white and also the background 
pattern is gray so I didn't I didn't want it to blend in too much I like how it looks in white and now I was originally going to use this card with the little label on it but I decided to cut the label off instead and I'll use it pretty much in the same way that it was on that card but I'm going to layer it with another label from the cut aparts from a Kelly Perky kit I'm going to glue the espresso machine to the photo and then the photo to the label and then the label to the other label and then the whole thing onto the card And I used a tiny bit of adhesive, so it's kind of wiggling around a little bit there, but that's okay. And now this says uh, afternoon jolt, which is very appropriate because it's, it's a Sunday afternoon, I think, when he's making this coffee. And it says first eggnog latte of the season. Oops, got to re reload my stapler. I'm using the Stampin' Up mini, mini stapler for this project, only because my... Uh, my tiny attacher has broken. It was broken for a long time, but I was using it anyways. And now it's just to the point now that you can't use it anymore. So I have ordered another one. I think I ordered another one. I actually might not have checked out. So I, I'm either getting one soon or not. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, I decided at first I was just going to call this one yum yum with the gold on on orange ink, but it was so subtle that I thought it would look better as a as a pattern. So that's what I did there. And now this is a whole other day and in the meantime I have received my hip kit pocket page like the the project life kit from hip kit so now I actually have more supplies to work with thank goodness because it was it was pretty tricky to use to not have enough cards so I started with that photo and all that I embellished it with was a chipboard piece from the freckled fawn kit and you'll get to see that in a little bit more detail at the end this is a piece of pattern paper that shows up on the other side of the page. So I've already used this pattern before, but I'm going to mat it on this card, this plaid card. I found the plaids a little overwhelming as a whole, but if you use them as a mat, they look really cool because they add such a bold pattern around the outside of your, of your card. I think it's really cute. So I'm going to use these gray Kelly Perky letter stickers to spell out gates. On, again, I'm, I'm on that pattern paper. So remember the last time I used this pattern paper was on that 1-800 number card. And for that one, I used a piece of vellum over my, my journaling so that the journaling would stand out. This time I'm going to use um, like stronger strokes. And so what I'm going to do is each stroke of lettering that I put on here, I'm just, I'm going to go over and over it with my pen a couple of times. So I'm spelling out, uh, this year we tried Gates Farm for apples. And that just helps it stand out a little bit, a little bit more than if I just use my regular handwriting. It ends up being a little bit messier, but that's okay. I like that it looks bolder. I could have used a thicker pen, but um, I didn't have one that was the right width. Like, like I have ones that are much, much thicker, but then the legibility goes down um, and you have to put too much space between your letters when you use a really thick point. And then, um, yeah, so, so that's why I kind of went over and over again so that I could control the width and not have such a, such a wide marker. So now I'm going to put an embellishment on this embellishment. So this is a paper clip that came in the hip kit for the month of September. And I thought I would try using this gold ink, which I'm, you know, using throughout this session just to kind of get used to it and see how it works. I thought I'd try it out on vellum and one layer of that ink just doesn't stand out enough on vellum. But I thought if I stamped a couple of times, it might stand out more so I'm going to I just pulled out my mini misty tool here and uh, I'm going to double stamp and it actually didn't double stamp properly because as you can see the the vellum is sticking to the stamp and then I put it down and I must not have put it down in exactly the right spot so I'm going to use the the magnets that you're supposed to use <laughs> brilliant move right to use a tool the way that it's supposed to be used and I'm going to actually triple stamp this and now that I'm using it as it's supposed to with the magnets holding down the paper the paper stays in place it doesn't move around and I can triple stamp freely and not have to worry about it messing up my image so there's the three 
stamps of that gold ink on the vellum. I really love how that looks. It's really beautiful. And it does take a while to dry. I'm just testing it up there. And the one that I stamped before is smearing when I touch it. So you do have to let it dry for a while. You could also hit it with a heat gun and that would stamp, that would set it as well. But I'm not patient enough to do that. So I'm just going to try to stamp around it and just not touch it while it dries. So I'm thinking about what phrase I'm going to use with this. And there are a couple of them. One of them says crafternoon, but I I don't really like how that looks with the scissors, so I'm going to choose this other one that says can't wait to create. And this is a planner stamp set from Kelly Perky that I just bought because it has a crafty theme. I don't usually buy planner stamp sets unless if it has a really useful theme for me that I know I'll use in pocket pages. So can't wait to create. I really like how this looks. It's a really cute embellishment. It's too bad I am not going to use it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so look, see, it looks really cute and it would totally look good on that, on that paper, but it won't work with this embellishment, or at least I can't figure out how to work. Maybe you guys would have been able to, but I just gave up on it and I'll hang on to it and use it another time. Meanwhile, this chipboard piece was sitting right alongside of me on the desk and I thought it, the color scheme was perfect. And this card is going to be just below a coffee themed card like the one with the espresso machine so I thought that that would look kind of cute there. Now it feels a little flat just the chipboard on top of cardstock and so I'm picking an enamel heart out of my stash just a neutral one and putting that on the heart that was drawn on the coffee sleeve. Now remember I had picked out that card for the top left hand corner of this spread but I changed my mind because another kit arrived and I didn't have to use that card after all I didn't really care for it so these cards here are the four by six cards that come in the October hip kit club and I really love this hand-drawn splay of flowers it's just so pretty and so fall looking I just love it so this is a wood veneer October it's like a hand-drawn beautiful scrolly uh, and it is from freckled fawn from the kit and so I just put it so that it looks like it's kind of dangling from the flowers there. I like how that looks. And now this is a card that uh, I think that that card is from, it might be from Kelly Perky or maybe from Studio, actually I think it's from Studio Calico. It's an older card. Oh, it could be from Scraptastic actually. I have so many different cards put together. I don't know what's what. But I thought that that pattern paper over to the right hand side, the one with square shapes on it, looked so much like the the circles that are on the card that I cut a swatch of that to put on the other side of the three by four journaling card that I'm layering there. So there's lots of layering going on on this card. And that uh, piece of pattern paper that's over on the right of the card there, that came from one of those Studio Calico 6x6 paper pads. So now I'm going to tell a story about how I took these four girls ice skating and we were having a great time and then one of them fell and hurt her knee at the very end of the ice skating session and hurt it quite badly. So it put a bit of a damper on the end of our night, but we did have a lot of fun before that. So that's what this journaling says. And then once I got the journaling done, I had a little space at the bottom, so I decided to put one of these puffy hearts from the Freckle Fawn kit in that space. And now I'm just going to outline around the edges of this photo because it seemed like it kind of disappeared into the card behind it. Now I want to put SMC on this because that's where we go ice skating and I really would have loved to have used this stamp set from Kelly Perky that I just got. I bought like five or six sets of stamps from her shop and uh, it's just these letters are just a smidgen too big for her. it would throw off the balance of this of this page of this card so instead I'm going to use these little tile letter stickers. They show up elsewhere on the page so it's nice to repeat them. And yeah, so I like how that looks. I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm just crossing off my journaling as I cover each of these stories. And now this is a set of label slash speech bubbles from Freckled Fawn from the kit from October. And I just cut off the little speech bubble part of it. And that's what I love about these stickers is that if you're into speech bubbles, you can just leave them as is, but they're really easy to modify into a regular label. And here I'm just journaling about my daughter's uh, 
she's in this activity group called treks and it's a part of girl guides but it's kind of like an alternative for older girls to do instead of doing pathfinders and there's no badge work at all they just do activities so that's what she's taking this year and now here are some four by six cards from that hip kit club from october and so i'm just pulling out a couple of well one card at this point maybe and also an embellishment. So this pink card is really pretty and uh, it adds a bit of pink and pink shows up elsewhere. So I wanna try to pull in some pink in a couple of different places so it isn't just in one place. And that is a fabric embellishment from Pink Fresh Studio. And I'm just journaling about the week overall on this card. Uh, just that our house is messy because there's a lot of projects going on. And that's what the journaling is about. So now that I'm done all of the cards, I'm just going to pull over both sides of this spread and have a look. Now at this phase, this is, I guess, kind of like the fourth stage. So the first is, um, just had to add some Tombow Mono Multi to that embellishment. The first is setting out the photos. The second is setting out the cards. The third is going cell by cell and scrapbooking each, each card. And now the fourth part is where I do this, like anything that's coming apart, I'll add some extra glue to, but also I'm looking for, I might shift around the cards if I need to, if they look differently after they've been scrapbooked than they did before. And I'm also adding any last minute embellishments to any of the cards to make the page look pulled together and cohesive. So I'm adding these cork leaves to two different places. Ideally, I like to add things in three different places, but I just couldn't find a third place to add a cork leaf. So I just decided there's no point in putting one just for the sake of putting one. So, so yeah. And then I wanted to add something else to that card, but I just couldn't make the heart puffy sticker work. And that's from Freckled Fawn as well. And so I just decided not to add anything else. But I do need something up here. So I'm going to add one of these what is this called? Resin? They're not resin. They are, oh, I forget what that is called, but they are arrow stickers from Freckled Fawn. Epoxy. And my daughter's helping me out and she wants me to put a lot of embellishments on this. She thinks that every single space should be covered with embellishments. So she's going to negotiate some, some additions here. She wants me to put homemade there because we made the couch. I mean, we didn't really make, we just assembled it. Um, and I'm and I'm saying maybe we could put something on here. And she said, maybe the stamp that says homemade. So I thought that was a good idea. So I'm going to add the homemade stamp right there. And I wanted her to stamp it, but she didn't want to. So I'm going to stamp it. I just pulled out my Misty. I'm going to shift the photo over. It was over to the side, but now that I'm putting the homemade stamp on it, I'm going to make it centered because the homemade stamp will be, st will be centered going to use my VersaFine ink here and she suggested I clean up my thing before I stamp it and that was a good idea and uh, there so that card looks nice I like I like how that looks and that was from the Kelly Perky Bon Appetit stamp set and now the last thing I'm going to do is add some more of those Ellie Studio stamps to a couple more places because it occurred to me that all of all of those Ellie Studio date stamps all ended up falling on the right hand side of the page and none of them are on the left side. So I just need to put some dates. I'll put one right here above the word homemade on this stamp or on this card. I mean, this card has a lot of stamping on it. And then I'll add it in one more place. So right here on this one with SMC on it, I'll just put it over here to the side just to provide some balance to some of the other things like the photos on the the lower right hand side so I'll put this on the kind of towards the upper middle of the left hand side so here is how these pages look when they're finished this is the first one the one on the left side 
And then here comes the second one on the right side. And then I took a couple of close up photos of some of my favorite cards for you to have a closer look at. And I will link in the information section below. I always link in the information section below the Flickr album for each of my projects. So if you ever want to take a closer look so that you can scrapbook or um, pin them or save them for scrap lifting or anything like that, you can always check out the link to my Flickr album because all of my projects are nicely organized over there for those of you who want to see them still for, for a few minutes. I really had a lot of fun with this page, although it definitely took a very, very long time. And I think that's just because my supplies did not kind of do me well this time around. And uh, I think I need to plan for what I'm going to do when I'm running out of cards at the end of the month and whether that means having a backup supply or I'm not sure what what the solution will be. If you guys have any advice for me, you can just let me know in a comment below. Take care and thanks so much for watching. Check out some of my other videos if you'd like to and have a really great scrappy week.